I basically ignore a letter from Georgia Mart to begin day 29. They want me to buy a Georgia membership. I will not be tempted by such scandalous temptations. I will complete the community center regardless of how long it takes me to do so. And more importantly, regardless of how much of a toll it takes on my soul. I've got some free time before Duran's house opens up, so I head to the mines to very quickly decimate the slime population within and collect some copper ore. I move on to floor 2, repeating the process, though this time I am dealing with zombies instead of slimes. This proves to be nothing short of cathartic. It is incredibly satisfying defeating these enemies and picking up the valuable loot they drop. Despite Duran's house opening at 9am, I continue on to floor 3 at 10.30am. This was not a conscious choice on my part. I simply did not realize how much time had gone by. Though I will say, I cannot even fathom a more enjoyable way to spend my morning. Despite the urge to remain in the mines and continue going further, I am eventually forced to leave the mines when my health drops to a smidge above zero. I pushed my luck just a little bit too far, but thankfully the consequences of that were not dire. If they had been, and I had been knocked out because of it, it would have had a disastrous effect on my vibes. I head into Doran's home and speak to him. He does not have a quest available for us. I feel like I have made a slight error, maybe I'm in the wrong location or something like that. I take a look at the goods he is selling. A lot of cooking recipes are available for purchase. Like, a lot. Suddenly, the requirement to cook every dish in order to achieve perfection has become a lot more difficult, but as always, I am nothing if not dedicated. This is but a minor obstacle on the road to perfection. In the market, Balor is selling seeds of various types. I'm not going to buy any right now, but I will keep this in mind in the future should I require any of these seeds. Something to note is that he sells artichoke seeds, which Pierre only begins to sell during year 2. So at least we have a reliable way of getting those seeds now, rather than just relying on the travelling cart. I head back into Pelican Town, I have decided to put the whole Durin's Rest thing to the side for the moment while I figure out what I have to do there next. I talk to Demetrius at the fountain by the community centre, a conversation which I actually enjoy. I let him know about the sprinklers I have on my farm, I like to dabble in a little bit of flexing from time to time. A trip to the saloon is on the table now, as I require many cups of coffee to ensure I have a nice pep in my step. I also buy a couple of salads while I'm here, and immediately inhale them to restore my health. I do something I probably should have done a lot sooner, I ask Robin to build a shed on the farm. The garden pots I acquired during spring will be placed in here. So, I will be able to plant the spring seeds I bought for community centre purposes. Robin is also selling quite a few nice things. Kegs, preserve jars, hardwood, among other useful items are being sold here thanks to the shop overhaul mod. She too is selling garden pots, so I buy 20 of them. I head into Piers at just the right moment to watch him walk away from the counter. This, under normal circumstances, would be annoying at best. However, this was something I actually wanted to happen right now. It means I can partake in a bit of shoplifting. I get my grubby little hands on four pomegranate saplings along with four Georgia veggies. In total, these are worth around 10,000 gold, so I have absolutely no regrets and I will be doing this again in the future. I send my pickaxe to Clint so he can upgrade it to iron quality, then I toss some items into the shipping bin to give our bank account a little boost after the shopping spree I went on today. I spend the rest of the day fishing. I won't show me fishing often as it's pretty much the same thing every time, but Rest assured, I will be doing as much fishing as possible any and every time I get the chance. We need so many fish for the community centre, it is quite frankly unbelievable. And the last thing I want to do is fall behind on that, or even worse, fail to repair the community centre before the end of the year because I dilly-dallied for too long when it comes to fishing. On day 30, I send gifts to Arwen, Balor and Edris. I believe what I need to do to unlock the next quest in Durin's Rest is reach one heart of friendship with these three villagers. So that is what I shall do. I also had to do that with Durin and Glorgan, but I've already achieved quite a few friendship parts with them thanks to the quests I completed for both of them. I set up a little area for my seed makers and toss my Salal berries and Georgia berries into a chest beside the seed makers. Georgia berries sell for around 900 gold, I believe, and Salal berries are a fantastic source of energy, so I would like to plant as many of these two seeds as I can. I begin the long walk to the desert, making time to blow up some rocks along the way to get some ores and gems. 
Upon reaching the desert, I do some foraging before entering Sandy's shop and spending all of my money on starfruit seeds. When I return home, it is time to knuckle down and get to work on planting various seeds. I begin with the starfruit seeds I just bought, then I follow that up with the planting of Georgia berry seeds and Salal berry seeds. I'm getting a bit of deja vu here I must say, this is giving me flashbacks to the Stardew Valley expanded playthrough I uploaded last year where I did pretty much the same thing. I planted hundreds of Georgia berry seeds at one point, maybe I will do that again here? Maybe? I guess it depends on what other seeds I can get my hands on. I want to get started on making and planting summer seeds as soon as I possibly can, so the rest of the day is spent walking around the big forest collecting summer forage. Tea saplings, as we saw during spring, are an excellent source of gold in the early game, so that's going to be the meta for a while. Basically, I want to make hundreds if not thousands of tea saplings during summer. Day 31 begins with a little text box informing me that there was an explosion during the night. Immediately upon leaving the house, I watch a cutscene where Susan introduces herself to us in person. She is no longer separated from the town as the boulder that was blocking her way in was destroyed last night. I do a bit of harvesting following this cutscene which results in me obtaining Georgia veggies, Salal berries and ghost berries. Clint has sent her pickaxe back to us, that is wonderful news, hopefully I don't misplace it again shall we say? I decide to make good use of the space available to me and place quality sprinklers on the farm. I then enter the shed that Robin built for me and begin placing my garden pots. The veteran Stardew Valley players that are watching right now might be aware that sprinklers do not work on garden pots. Luckily I am also a veteran Stardew Valley player so I remember this pretty soon after I began to place the garden pots and quality sprinklers. I quickly fix my mistake and fill up the shed in a much more effective manner. I decide to focus on green beans, cauliflower and potatoes first, planting the seeds for each of these crops. Of course I will have to water them manually every day but that is a small price to pay as this is pretty much the only way to complete the spring crops bundle in the community center. I toss a spice berry into a seed maker as that should give us another pack of summer seeds. I clear out just a teeny bit more space, I didn't have to but it's honestly very satisfying chopping down trees and breaking rocks and just clearing out the mess on the farm. Then I finally begin planting all of the summer seeds I made using the forage I collected during the last two days. I'm not done yet though as I also want to plant coffee beans. I would eventually like to have a shed full of kegs that are constantly producing coffee. I continue working on my friendships with the residents of Durin's Rest as I am very excited to continue making progress in that area. I am very much in need of some financial aid as I am currently the opposite of rich so I head to the home of the bees in Durin's Rest. I spend the rest of the night defeating them in order to obtain their oh so valuable honey. It still amazes me that this honey is worth over 1000 gold but I certainly will not complain about it. In fact, I am very grateful for it. I harvest a pearl on day 32 which is not a sentence I ever thought I would say. Truth be told I do not know which mod has added a seed that grows pearls as this one grew from a mixed seed. That is a mystery I will investigate in the future. I doubt I will go out of my way to buy or somehow obtain this seed in the future too but it's nice knowing that we can grow a pearl. They're worth a few thousand gold and pretty much every villager loves them so they will be nice gifts in the future. Willie has sent me a letter informing us that his friend Murphy has arrived in town. Murphy would like someone to assist him on his fishing trawler. You remember back in spring I repaired the broken bridge at the beach and unlocked the tide pool area? I mentioned that that area will be useful in the future when it comes to a mod I installed but was not able to get working yet. Well, good news, I was able to get that mod working. It turns out I was using an outdated version of it but that's all sorted now so we are good. Basically this mod, the fishing trawler mod, allows you to go on Murphy's boat and do a bunch of different activities to keep the boat running smoothly. At the end of the fishing trip you get to keep any of the fish that were caught during it. The best part, you don't use your fishing rod. The boat has nets that automatically catch fish. I quickly toss some items into the bin of shipping then I permanently borrow a couple of sports drinks from Harvey without his knowledge. I buy 100 summer seeds from Pierre then I rush to the beach, specifically the tide pool area where I meet Murphy. We set sail for the high seas where unbeknownst to me the most difficult nerve wracking experience I've ever endured while playing Stardew Valley was about to take place. 
I grab a cup of coffee, which gives me a plus two speed boost, and make my way into the deck of the ship, I think it's called. Everything seems to be fine here, so I go into the hull area. Immediately, things go wrong, as there is water flooding the boat already. At this point, I became tremendously confused and did not know what to do. I focused pretty much exclusively on grabbing coal from the box and using it to keep the engine running, while also making sure to patch up any holes on the wall so that the ship doesn't become entirely flooded. I thought I was doing a mighty fine job and I was feeling very proud of myself. Unfortunately, I forgot about two other aspects of this fishing adventure. Number one, there is a computer in the room Murphy is in. You can interact with this computer to get more time added to the length of the fishing trip. Number two, and this is the important one, I did not interact with the nets in any way, shape or form. They ripped very shortly after this whole thing began and I did not repair them, which means all of the fish I caught before they were ripped were lost. On top of that, because they were not fixed, I could not catch any more fish. In short, I finished this fishing trip with zero fish. I did not realize my mistake as it happened, and so I was very, very confused when I checked the chest that supposedly contains all of the fish I caught and it was empty. This was a disaster, plain and simple, and even worse than that, it was all my fault. I have nobody to blame but myself. While I plant and water my summer seeds, I want to quickly discuss something related to the fishing trawler mod. So, the way it works is you select a day and you can only go on the fishing trip on that day. I originally selected Thursday, but I was not happy at all with how today went. I felt like I hadn't gotten a proper idea of how beneficial this mod might be. So, I decided to change the day to Friday, meaning I will go on another fishing trip tomorrow. This will be the one and only time I do two fishing trips in one week. After tomorrow, I will only be going on Fridays. Also, if tomorrow ends up being a complete failure again, then I'll just accept it. I won't go again on Saturday. But I do have a much better idea of how it works now, so I have faith that we will do a sensational job tomorrow. I harvest some more pearls on day 33 along with an ancient fruit. Ancient fruit have joined the group consisting of salal berries and georgia berries. This group of crops will automatically be tossed into seed makers so I can grow more of these crops than I could ever possibly know what to do with. I would like to bring something to your attention now. Jacob has a quest for us. In his words, and I quote, I am looking for coffee to eat in front of the TV. I don't think he is aware of how coffee works. You do not eat coffee. You drink it. That is also a sentence I never thought I would have to say. Regardless, I will provide Jacob with what he wants. I can only hope he does not eat the cup along with the coffee. It is now time for the main event of the day. Once again, I immediately drink some of Murphy's coffee to get a speed boost. Then I get to work on patching up the room with the engine. It is honestly very, very nerve-wracking trying to do this and keep the engine stocked with coal and repair the nets all at the same time. And you know what? I love it. I don't just want this challenge, I welcome this challenge with open arms. I have opened the door to my house, pulled out a chair, allowed this challenge to sit down on my dining table and prepared a lovely three course meal for it. If this challenge was a villager, I would already be at the maximum 10 hearts of friendship with it based solely on the amount of time, effort and focus I put into it today. I am rambling right now, I am well aware of that. Truth be told, I'm simply trying to say as much as I can so I can show as much footage of me working on this ship as possible. I feel like I've shown enough of that footage for you to feel my sheer raw panic through the screen as I did all of those activities involved in this fishing trip. So, let us now look at the rewards I received upon successfully making it back to shore. Halibut, a new type of seaweed whose name I cannot pronounce and will only embarrass myself if I try to, pufferfish and red snapper and a decent amount of these fish too. In total, 19 fish. I am very glad I did this fishing trip again today, for the sake of science of course, because, as it turns out, it is absolutely worth it. I will probably sell this fish as the majority of fish needed for the community center have to be gold star and I'm already working away on that whenever I get free time, but all in all I think it's safe to say that this fishing trawler mod is absolutely worth using. I teleport to Doran's Rest where I talk to the villagers in the market in order to bump Arwen and Edris up to the magical One Heart of Friendship. I have successfully completed the quest to get five of the residents here to One Heart of Friendship. Doran gives me a Dwarven Ale for doing so, which I sell right back to him. 
I also gave him the 5 Dwarven Barley Malt, which as usual unlocks another quest in which I have to make a machine, put the item I just gave to Durin into it in order to make a new item, and give 5 of those to Durin. I head to the broken bridge in the town where I read a sign that says, Warning, bridge intentionally destroyed. Talk to me at the pub if you're brave enough to venture into the wasteland. If there's one thing I'm good at, it is repairing broken bridges, so this is something I am very much interested in. I head to Doran's home where the newest quest reveals itself. I must deliver 600 wood to Doran in order to repair the bridge. That isn't too bad actually, I have plenty of wood back on the farm. I have also unlocked a farmhouse here in Doran's Rest. The big man Doran has sent us a bed and a fridge as housewarming gifts I assume, which is very kind of him. I have also been sent the crafting recipe I need for the machine related to the quest he gave us today. There are a lot of quests here in Doran's Rest, but they are definitely worth doing. I mean, we've gotten a really cool hammer, a new farmhouse, some crafting recipes, access to an area where we can get shadow honey, and access to the mines just by doing these quests. So, while I have spent quite a while doing these quests, I am happy with that choice because it has helped us out quite a bit, especially when it comes to our finances. After sending my pickaxe to Clint, I spend the rest of the night chopping down trees. The crop fairy also shows up during the night and does some magic stuff in order to fully grow some of our crops. On day 34, I discover that it was our salalberries that the crop fairy decided to bless with magic last night, which means a good portion of them are ready for harvest. Something to note about salalberries is they are similar to strawberries and ancient fruit in the sense that once they are fully grown, you do not have to replant the seed when you harvest the crop. It stays there and you can harvest it over and over again. I spend some time watering my crops in the garden pot shed, plant some ancient seeds and Georgia berry seeds, make a couple of warp totems and teleport to Durin's Rest. I have said Durin's Rest so many times in this playthrough already and I'm absolutely going to say it many, many more times. What can I say? I love the Durin's Rest mod. I enter Balor's house and go into his basement where supernatural eggplants have taken over and I must fight them. Once again, that is a sentence I never thought I would say. After clearing out his basement, I head to Doran's house and give him the 600 wood he wants. Immediately following this, I enter the market where the residents have gathered alongside Doran. Doran announces that I have accepted the responsibility of keeping the town safe from any enemies that may show up on the island the bridge connects to. I did not sign up for that, but considering the positive effect this town has had on my bank account, I am willing to protect the people here. Balor says he has seen something strange in the neighborhood, and apparently we are who he is meant to call upon. He wants me to meet him at his house. I feel like I may have jumped the gun a little bit by going into his basement earlier and defeating the eggplants. Sure enough, upon entering Balor's home, he tells us that his eggplants have come alive and have taken over the basement. He wants us to take care of them which I unfortunately cannot do today as these eggplants seem to function similarly to the bees that drop shadow honey, in the sense that when you defeat them, they won't respawn until the following day. Which means Balor must wait until tomorrow for his eggplant kerfuffle to be solved. We've spent enough time in Doran's Rest for one day I feel, so I return to Pelican Town where I buy all of the seeds I need for the summer crops bundle in the community center. I also pick up some wheat, sunflower, and corn seeds while I'm here, along with a couple of scarecrows. I then spend the last of my money on summer seeds. I gotta say, in a weird way, I am really looking forward to doing the normal community center bundles in a future playthrough. I have a feeling they're going to be a lot easier compared to what we're doing now, especially the fishing ones. I have to catch so many fish. Like I said, I have done some fishing here and there whenever I have had downtime, but at some point during the season, I'm going to have to dedicate a few days exclusively to just fishing so I can make sure I get everything I need in terms of the summer fish. Clint has sent me my golden pickaxe on day 35. I have arrived too early to enter Balor's home, so I do what I usually do in this circumstance and spend some time lollygagging in the mines. I eventually enter Balor's home and get to work on defeating the haunted eggplants. This goes relatively smoothly and I defeat 10 of them without too much hassle. The time I have spent battling bees has made me a lot more cautious when it comes to combat, so I will hopefully avoid being knocked out for the rest of this playthrough. I talk to Balor at the market to complete his quest and I spend some of my doubloons on red cabbage seeds. I also buy two new versions of hops seeds along with 100 artichoke seeds, 40 dwarven camas seeds. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. 
and 20 nub root bulbs. After that little spending spree, I talk to Durin, who warns us that the hardest enemy we have ever faced waits across the bridge. The good news is this enemy cannot fly, which I very much appreciate. This enemy turns out to be the Dirt Dragon. It isn't too difficult, surprisingly enough. It shoots fireballs which do a bit of damage, but they're easy enough to dodge. I will say, however, bumping into this enemy takes away like half of your health. So the best way to approach this battle is to just slam the hammer down when you're near it and run away as soon as it starts moving. I make my way around the area, carefully battling the Dirt Dragons here. These dragons drop eggs when they are defeated and Durin wants 10 of these, so our main goal here is to of course acquire 10 of these eggs. I take a break from this battle of the century and do a bit of gallivanting around the area. I head to the west side of the island where I find a hidden cave. I enter and walk to the end of the cave where I find a sword that has been lodged into a stone, reminiscent of the legend of King Arthur. I pull the sword from the stone, acquiring the legendary Exaliburn. This is an absolute game changer and for once I am not exaggerating when I say that. This sword makes quick work of the dirt dragons. It shoots fireballs which means I can keep somewhat of a distance from them, hurl fireballs at them and collect the eggs they drop. I am very excited to see how this sword handles the enemies in the pelican town mines and especially the enemies in the skull cavern. Along with any other enemies we may encounter during our escapades. After collecting all of the eggs I need, I warp back to the starting area, then to the bus stop. I spend the remainder of the night planting my summer seeds. I give the dragon eggs to Durin on day 36, and I believe that is the final quest he has for me that is related to combat. Which means all I have left are the quests involving things we can make using dwarven barley. You know, the things I put into machines to make other things, and then I unlock the crafting recipe for another machine that can make another thing. I don't really know how to describe it, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Also, the sword I picked up, the Exaliburn, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but regardless, the Exaliburn has made going through the mines so much easier. I genuinely cannot even begin to describe how quickly it takes care of all the enemies here. Even the zombie foremen, which were a decent challenge before, do not stand a chance now that I have this sword. I almost feel bad for the enemies here. Almost. I got so immersed in using the sword that I didn't even realize how much time had gone by. Before I knew it, I had made it to the home of the bees and was taking them on so I could get their wonderful honey. Again, the sword makes quick work of these bees, I can throw fireballs at them and take them out in one hit. As overpowered as it may be, I did do a lot to get my hands on this sword so I do not feel bad for using this. In fact, using this sword has had a profoundly positive effect on the overall vibes I'm experiencing. I managed to make it back home and toss the loot I collected today into the shipping bin before the night is over. I also make one each of the machines Durin has sent me the crafting recipe for. On day 37, I observe my machines. Marvelous. I send my watering can to Clint and buy 10 iridium sprinklers. Because of the amount of seeds I have that I still need to plant, I decided to spend the rest of the day preparing the ground for the planting of these seeds. It takes many minutes, but I get it done and plant a good percentage of the seeds I bought from Balor a couple of days ago too. And that's actually it for today. The Salal berries that were grown by the crop fairy continue to shine a light on my life as they are once again ready for harvest on day 38. Following that, it's off to the mines. I took a bit of a break from this area, but I'm back now and I want to make it to the bottom of this place by the end of tomorrow. I make it to floor 100 where I obtain my first star drop. Sweet. I push forward, making my way through floor after floor after floor. The golden pickaxe paired with the Exaliburn makes things really easy and I get to floor 112 before I pass out. Clint returns our watering can to us on day 39. I am greeted by the sensational sight of summer forage which I harvest and turn into more summer seeds. 400 more summer seeds to be exact. But that is not all. There's even more forage ready to collect on the farm. I use this forage to make another 220 summer seeds. I make 165 tea saplings which I toss into the shipping bin. I donate red mushrooms, cave carrots and mixed seeds to the exotic foraging bundle, maple and pine tree saplings to the summer and winter foraging bundles, and donate multiple items to the boiler room bundles. The luau takes place today but I unfortunately participated in too much dilly dallying and I ended up missing the festival. I wanted to spend my doubloons in the market and Durin's rest as I need an iridium bar for the boiler room bundles. 
but the market is closed I assume because of the luau. So I teleport back home and return to the community center with more items for the boiler room as well as mussels for the crab pot bundle and torches, clams and coral for the foraging bundles. I head to the mines, not to advance further and make it to floor 120, but rather to obtain the remaining bones and bat wings I need for the community center. I end up completing the skeleton monster eradication goal which I was not expecting, but I am very pleased with all the same. I also made 82,000 gold from the saplings I shipped today. Some radishes are ready for harvest on day 40. I plant Georgia berry seeds along with some summer seeds. I buy the crafting recipe for doubloons from Durin, now I can use one durinium to make 100 doubloons, which is a very fair exchange if you ask me. I buy some coal and an iridium bar from Glorgan, along with some rice shoots and a citron, crimson citrus, and rested juniper tree sapling from Balor. I purchase the second backpack upgrade in Piers and grab an orange and apple tree sapling, 10 garden pods and 10 iridium sprinklers. Also, while I'm here, I somehow, wink wink, nudge nudge, get my hands on 5 grass starter. I tripped and I, I fell into them and they ended up in my inventory, you know, I mean, you know how it is, you know what happens, it's happened to all of us, right? I send my copper axe to Clint so he can upgrade it to iron, then I head to the saloon. I make good use of the part of the community mod here. Talking to a villager gives you 5 friendship points with the surrounding villagers. The default value for this is 2 friendship points, but because of the number of villagers in the game, I feel like 5 points is a fair compromise. Because of the amount of people here on a Friday, I can get 85 bonus friendship points with everybody here just from talking to them, on top of the 20 friendship points you normally get from just talking to a villager. So 105 friendship points in total. I donate an iridium bar, coal, bones and white algae to the community center, unlocking the bounty board bundles and the vault bundles. But I have not fully completed the boiler room yet, I still need to donate some gems. I take a look at the bounty board bundles. At first glance, they make me want to cry, but upon further inspection, it's not too bad I suppose. Don't get me wrong, it's going to take quite a bit of time to get them done, but it's not as bad as it could be I feel. The vault bundle is pretty simple, I just have to donate 98,000 gold. Overall, I'm feeling pretty good about the community center in general. I think the two most difficult bundles are the fishing and bounty board bundles, but they're manageable. Also I did check and the only fish that is exclusive to spring is the legend, which we don't need to donate thankfully, so we're good on that front. Susan sends us melon seeds on day 41, thank you Susan. I harvest some poppies and coffee beans along with some ancient fruit and wheat. Also the potatoes in the shed are ready, so I collect those too. The bad news though is I don't have enough to donate. So I sprinkle fertilizer on the garden pots and plant potato and kale seeds. I wanted to ask Clint to crack open some geodes for me, but I forgot he is working on upgrading my axe. I find that a bit questionable, considering he was not doing anything at all when I walked in, but then I ask him to do something for me and he's just magically busy? That's pretty suspicious if you ask me. It's off to the mines and this time I am indeed going to progress further. Again, we have some pretty powerful tools and weapons at our disposal, so I was able to get to floor 120 thanks in large part to the Golden Pickaxe and the Exaliburn. I now have the Skull Key, which means I can enter the Skull Caverns. I think I'll wait until I get the Iridium Pickaxe to go to the Skull Caverns, though. Our axe has been returned to us on day 42. What a delicious start to the day. I'm also not really sure whether or not to mention harvesting crops anymore, or how frequently to mention it. I think what I'll do is mention when I harvest or plant the money makers, so to speak. So things like ancient fruit, Georgia berries and summer seeds. As well as things I need for the community center, like the potatoes and kale I have growing in garden pots. I donate coffee beans, summer spangles, poppies and peppers to the community center. I am really proud of myself for staying on top of the donations. Next up is a visit to Clint where I have my geodes cracked open. I need one petrified slime, I think that's how you pronounce it, three mudstone and three celestine, I believe. And I only need to donate two of those three items, so we have a bit of leeway with the last boiler room bundle, as I can choose which two of those three I want to donate. I donate some items to the museum, including the one mudstone I had. I did not mean to donate this, but I have two celestine and one petrified slime, so I guess we're going with those two. 
I ask Clint to crack open even more geodes and I do not get the item I need, but that is okay. I want to get the boiler room finished before the end of summer, so I still have two weeks or so. Now that I have the iron axe, I can break tree stumps and logs to get hardwood. I'm going to break any of these that I see, as I want as much hardwood as I can get for future projects that will require that material. I check out the traveling cart, which is not selling garlic or garlic seeds, but it turns out I don't actually need garlic. At least not for the spring crops bundle. You see, I can leave one of the crops out and just donate the rest, and that will still be enough to complete that bundle. I grab as much hardwood as I can get my hands on in the secret woods, along with some red baneberry. The quarry area on the farm is filled to the brim with copper, iron and gold ore, emeralds, diamonds and other gems, and frozen geodes. I want to break every rock here and collect everything, but I am a busy bee and it also is my bedtime, so I must leave this place for now. Day 43 is already off to an absolutely sensational start as I harvest Georgia berries and starfruit among a couple of other crops. Summer forage is also ready for collection. I have to say, the shop overhaul mod has paid dividends and has undoubtedly made this adventure quite a bit easier thanks to the sprinklers that were added to Pier Shop. I donate radishes to the summer crops bundle and gold star starfruit to the quality crops bundle. I finish off the summer foraging bundle for which I receive a bee house. Acorns and common mushrooms are donated to the fall foraging bundle and a petrified slime is thrown into the boiler room. I really do hope I have been pronouncing petrified correctly, but I don't think I have. I sell the rest of the starfruit I have to Pierre and make 73 tea saplings. I've got more Georgia berry and ancient seeds at my disposal, so I plant those. I would like to get the Georgia berry and ancient fruit empire up and running as quickly as possible. The tea saplings I created are sold along with half of the salal berries I have in my inventory. I find a banana at the area outside the tunnel beside the bus stop, which is a very nice find. Ordinarily, a banana is something I would obtain in winter after reaching Ginger Island, so I am very surprised to receive one this early, though it is of course a welcome surprise. The walk to the desert also provides me with plenty of opportunities to take on monsters that will have to be defeated as part of the monster eradication goals. So it's nice to know that we are consistently making progress on these goals every time I partake in this marathon to Calico Desert. Upon entering Sandy's shop, she tells us that we should avoid walking home as ghosts come out in droves at night time. I hear you. I understand you. But above all else, I'm going to ignore you. I buy some rhubarb seeds, 10 coconuts, and 200 starfruit seeds, then I venture onto the road back to Pelican Town. Just as Sandy warned us, the area is teeming with ghosts. Luckily, we have the Exaliburn, so getting back home is a complete walk in the park. Just before I head to sleep, I make sure to plant some of the starfruit seeds I bought today. The planting of starfruit seeds continues on day 44. I continue the tradition of making summer seeds. I feel like I have grown especially attached to these wonderful packets of seeds. And I harvest the green beans that have grown in the garden pots for the first time. I need 30 of these, so this is something I will have to repeat two more times. I head to Durin's Rest where I deliver 5 Dwarven Barley Malt to him. This of course unlocks a new quest to make 5 of a new item and give them to him. I check the mailbox at my farmhouse here and read the letter that contains the crafting recipe for the machine needed to make this new item. I spend just a little bit of time battling the bees here to collect some honey. I might as well while I'm here. Then I head to Grandpa's Shed for the first time. As I have the iron axe, I can break the two logs that block the entrance to this shed. I step inside and analyze my surroundings. Just as I thought, this is indeed a shed. But it's not just a shed. No, it's a big shed. The rest of the day, as well as days 45 and 46, are spent chopping down trees and clearing out the rest of the space in this big patch of land where I have been planting my seeds. Day 47 is a massive summer forage collection day. Of course, I collected other crops, the main ones being ancient fruit, Georgia berries, and pearls. I don't know if you can consider a pearl to be a crop, but it grew from a seed, so technically it's a crop. I don't know what's going on anymore. My brain is fried, if I'm being honest. Between the first day of spring and now, I have written around 20,000 words. That's 20,000 words about Stardew Valley. I wasn't exaggerating about my brain being fried, by the way. 
When I go to sleep, I dream about summer forage and the mine's endurance rest and stealing tea saplings from Pierre and catching dozens of fish. After making 670 summer seeds, I plant as many of them as I possibly can. Bear in mind, I also planted more summer seeds and starfruit seeds during that period of time I spent clearing out more space on the farm. I would not be surprised if I end up with like a thousand or two thousand summer seeds by the end of this season. That's just the way things are going right now. I donate potatoes, cauliflower, blueberries, tomatoes, red cabbages and melons to the community center. All of which I harvested during the aforementioned period of time spent cleaning up the farm. I complete the summer crops bundle and receive an iridium sprinkler. Sweet. Upon further inspection of the bounty board bundles, I gotta say, they're really not too bad. I admit, I panicked when I first saw them simply because of how many items are required for these bundles, but if I stay cool, calm and collected, I think I'll be able to get this one done before the end of the year. I buy some geodes from Clint along with a rusty cog and a rusty spur for the museum and five battery packs. I ask Clint to crack open the geodes I just bought and I very quickly get my hands on two mudstone. It's at this point I deeply regret donating that one mudstone I had to the museum. I buy some more geodes from Clint, ask him to crack them open, and I receive the third mudstone I need. I was actually hoping to get one Celestine because I already have two of those, but I mean, I'm not going to complain about this. I will happily take three mudstone. I make a few donations to the museum, I have been lacking just a bit when it comes to this area, but there are a lot of things I've had to stay on top of since this playthrough began. So I won't hold that against myself. I head to the beach where I talk to Murphy even though Murphy isn't anywhere to be seen. I have the option to go on the fishing trip, but when I accept it, nothing happens. I believe what has occurred is you cannot go on the fishing trip after 6pm. I made it to the beach before 6pm, but talked to Murphy after 6pm. So maybe the game just made Murphy disappear because even though I got to the beach on time, I was too late when it came to actually seeing and talking to Murphy. Any whomst, I donate 3 mudstone to the community center, finishing off the boiler room. We have now unlocked the minecart system. We have also just completed our first room in the community center. Well done us! On day 48, we have officially reached the stage where we will never be short on coffee beans ever again. I make 170 more summer seeds. I do apologize for how often I have mentioned this, but harvesting forage and making seeds brings me so much happiness. I just want to share this experience and that happiness with all of you. I head into Robin's shop where a cutscene plays. Robin says she has figured out what material she needs. We need to give her 150 hardwood, 600 stone, 50 iron bars and 20 battery packs. Yeah, basically what has happened here is the game for some reason skipped the cutscene where Robin shows up at her house and talks about Grandpa's shed. Instead, it has just jumped ahead to her telling us what she needs to repair the shed, which doesn't really bother me. In fact, I'm just happy to finally be able to repair the shed. The reason for this being it contains a greenhouse, which I desperately need. I did a bit of mathematics in my head while I walked to Clint's and figured out that I have just enough gold to buy 15 battery packs from him. This is very good news because I already have 5 of them, which means I have the 20 needed for Grandpa's shed. So I gather all of the required stone, hardwood and iron bars and toss them along with the battery packs into the chest in Grandpa's shed. And just like that we have delivered everything Robin asked for. I refused to partake in any sort of dilly-dallying when it comes to that shed and especially the greenhouse it contains. I buy three iridium bars from Glorgan as well as five iron bars and two more iridium bars. I make five of the new machine required for Durin's most recent quest, then I make more doubloons and buy eight more iridium and iron bars which I used to make four of the previous two machines that Durin taught us how to make. Just before I leave I buy a final five iridium bars. I place all of my machines down, my thought process here is I want to be able to make everything Durin wants as quickly as possible. I'm at the point where I want to wrap up the Durin's Rest quests and find out what we get for completing everything. Robin pays us a visit on the morning of day 49 and lets us know that the shed will be repaired tomorrow. Thank you Robin, thank you so much. Also I goofed. Uh, I accidentally interacted with the mailbox while I was holding my golden pickaxe. Because I had 5 iridium bars in my inventory, it sent my pickaxe to Clint to be upgraded. 
That was very silly of me, but I was planning on upgrading my pickaxe anyway, so we shall call this a happy accident. I take a look at what Marnie is selling. The shop overhaul mod has added eggs, milk, cloth, wool, basically every animal item. Along with things like fiber and mayonnaise machines to our shop. I don't buy anything, but that is good to know. Next up is a cutscene where I pet Dusty the dog. This was a therapeutic cutscene and was very much needed after the previous action-filled, jam-packed and very intense 49 days. I have gotten to the point where I don't even read the quests on the bounty board anymore, I just accept them and if I have an item any villager wants then I send it to them when I get the chance. This honestly does not happen as often as I would like it to as I don't yet have access to a good portion of the items that the villagers have requested. After selling some crops to Pierre, I buy 50 tomato seeds as I need gold star tomatoes for the community center. As well as basic fertilizer, 9 iridium sprinklers and one more iridium sprinkler that I was able to afford after selling some salal berries. For the first time, I cross Shearwater Bridge and enter East Scarp. I cannot believe I haven't come here yet, but in my defense, I have been up to my eyeballs in various shenanigans and tomfoolery up until this point. The first house I enter in this lovely area is going for a minimalist aesthetic, shall we say? It doesn't have a lot of furniture, is what I'm trying to get at here. Maybe this will be my house in the future? I would like that, I would like that a lot. I enter a hotel, or an inn I think it's called. I meet Rosa, who dropped something she was cooking and immediately blamed me for it. Lovely, my first day here and already somebody is angry with me. I apologize, which results in Rosa immediately apologizing too. I am massively confused. I think I'm just going to forget that happened and start fresh with Rosa. Water under the bridge, right? She is selling bread, cookies, coffee, East Scarp warp totems, and the crafting recipe for warp totems. I don't buy anything, but I will remember this for the future, as I'm sure those warp totems especially will come in handy. I explore the hotel a bit more and I find a lovely swimming pool area. The rooms here are very nicely furnished, a stark contrast to that first house I entered. Overall, I like the aesthetic of this hotel. I enter a house where I meet Munchington the cat. Nice, we have Dusty the dog and Munchington the cat. There is a lovely beach area, I hope some sort of festival takes place here or just something that involves the villagers hanging out here, I feel like that would be a lovely touch. I enter a cave system, but I don't have a pickaxe with me as I accidentally sent it to Clint this morning. So I shall return at some point and see what this cave system has to offer. I enter another cave and meet Lexi. I do not know who or even what Lexi is, but I want to be their friend. They have a positive aura and I'm liking the vibe they're giving off. I make my way to the north of East Scarp where I find an exit that leads to the mountain area. You know, the place by the mines and robin shop. It's good to know that we can access East Scarp from here. I was not aware of that until now. The Durin's rest machines are thriving on day 50, though I would like to build a shed and put all of the machines inside it. But that is a job for another day, maybe even another season, as I have a lot on my plate right now. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm complaining when I say things like that. I'm honestly really happy to have so many things to do and talk about on a daily basis. I don't want this to change. I want to have a dozen different things to do every day. Robin has repaired Grandpa's shed. That is the best news I have received during this entire playthrough so far. The first thing I do is head upstairs and plant all of the tomato and kale seeds, making sure to sprinkle fertilizer on them as I do. The reason for this being I need gold star kale and tomatoes for the community center. I also plant some artichoke seeds, fully covering the entirety of the greenhouse with seeds. I donate 30 green beans and take a few minutes to really assess what I have left to do here in the community center. Allow me to explain what I'm thinking right now. The spring crops bundle is fine, I just need rhubarb and unmilled rice, both of which are growing in the garden pots. For the quality crops bundle, I can thankfully leave out the strawberries and easily get the other four done. The fall crops will be a walk in the park, I will just buy the seeds I need for them when fall begins. The artisan bundle shouldn't be too bad, it's just a case of throwing fruits and vegetables into preserved jars and kegs. 
and planting the fruit tree saplings so I can get apricots, peaches, cherries, and pomegranates. The animal bundle is the most difficult one here. The items being gold star does add a significant challenge to this, but as long as I can get a cooper two and a barn, and fill them up with cows, goats, chickens, and ducks within the next two or three weeks, I should be fine. The fishing bundles are just time consuming more than anything else. I have been making a very conscious effort to fish whenever I can, like I've mentioned a couple of times. It has been going pretty well, but we are closing in on the point where I need to dedicate a few days specifically to fishing to make sure I don't miss out on any of them. The Bounty Board Bundles I spoke about this one earlier, it's not necessarily difficult, it just requires a lot of items. I think the worst part about this one is going to be getting all of the cooking dishes I need. I could buy them, I know Duran sells at least a couple of these dishes, but I would rather make them myself instead of buying them. And that goes for all of the other bundles too. Unless I absolutely have to, I would feel a lot better about myself if I obtained all of the items I need instead of relying on buying them in shops. So, overall, I am feeling pretty confident when it comes to the bundles I have left. It won't be easy, don't get me wrong, but it is a lot of fun and a very nice change of pace compared to the normal bundles. I ask Robin to build a coop for us, then I spend the rest of the day fishing at the beach. I have received my iridium pickaxe on day 51. The very first corn harvest takes place. The rest of the day is spent fishing at the mountain lake. Yup, the fishing portion of this playthrough is officially underway. On day 52, I harvest more summer forage than I know what to do with. That's a lie actually, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this. And that will be revealed pretty soon. I finally buy the iridium fishing rod, and as you may have guessed, I spend the rest of the day fishing. Even more summer forage is ready on day 53. I never really took the time to plant summer seeds or spring or fall or winter seeds this much in the past, so I had no idea it would result in this much forage growing on the farm. Now I truly understand why people invest so much time and effort into making tea saplings. It makes so much sense now. A tomato harvest takes place too, and of course any Georgia berries and ancient fruit I get are thrown in two seed makers as always. I ask Robin to add another coop to the farm and I buy 10 preserve jars from her. We might as well continue the tradition, the rest of the day is spent fishing. Starfruit is ready for harvest on day 54. I'm going to be honest, I'm a lot more excited now when I see summer forage than I am when I see starfruit, which is weird because starfruit has always been my favorite crop in the game. I visit Murphy at the tide pool area and embark on a fishing trip with him. I drink a cup of coffee as always, that speed boost is invaluable when it comes to getting around the boat as quickly as possible. Just like the last fishing trip I went on, this is nerve wracking to a goofy degree. That is the best way I can describe it. It's a lot of fun, but it takes so much concentration and effort to stay on top of repairing the nets, keeping the engine running, and repairing the wall to make sure the boat doesn't get flooded. My one and only complaint is that you can only get ocean fish from this fishing trip. Maybe I'm wrong, and in the future I'll be able to get river fish and mountain fish. That would be swell, but that is just a minor complaint on my part. This activity is a lot of fun, and I'm really glad I installed this mod. When the timer dropped down below 20 seconds, I did something I am very proud of myself for doing. I remembered that I can use the computer to add 30 more seconds to the timer. When the fishing trip concludes, I check the chest containing all of the fish we caught during it. I have received clams, starfish, halibut, crayfish, snails, periwinkles, and red mullets. It may have been difficult, but it was absolutely worth it. Prepare yourself now for the surprise of the century. The rest of the day is spent fishing. The penultimate round of starfruit harvesting occurs on day 55. I also get a taro root, which is really cool. Normally you can only get those when you unlock Ginger Island. I've built up a nice collection of seeds. I've got 14 ancient seeds, 57 Georgia berry starters, and 20 fall seeds. I acquired the fall seeds by putting common mushrooms into the seed maker. Things are looking mighty fine in the greenhouse in Grandpa's shed as the kale is tantalizingly close to being fully grown. I sell a few of my crops, buy 8 full stacks of fiber from Marnie, and buy 4 chickens for the first coop I had built on the farm. 
I spend the rest of the day fishing in front of Leah's cottage as I need to get Pike and Dorado for the community center. I have also decided that I'm going to wait until I have every fish I need and donate them all at the same time. I feel like that is going to be really satisfying, so I'm very much looking forward to doing that. Day 56, the final day of summer. After making as many summer seeds as I can, I have around 3,200 of them. Okay, now I really understand the obsession some people have with tea saplings. Though I will say I may have overdone it as I make over 600 tea saplings. And the only reason why I didn't make more is because I ran out of wood. 600 tea saplings sells for 300,000 gold, so we are going to be in a very comfortable position financially heading into fall. The final starfruit harvesting session of the season takes place, officially signaling the end of summer. That's a lot of S's in one sentence. I harvest all of the kale that has grown in the greenhouse and plant wheat and artichoke seeds in their place. I improve my financial situation even further as I sell starfruit to Pierre, unlocking the achievement for earning a total of 1 million gold. I buy iridium sprinklers, donate corn, gold star kale, and unmilled rice to the community center. I also donate a total of 98,000 gold to buy all of the vault bundles and complete that room in its entirety. The third and final backpack upgrade has been purchased, which means we now have 48 inventory slots. That is very chill, I must say. I head to Durin's Rest, I have lost count of how many times I have said that, and I give the 5 items Durin wanted to him, which of course unlocks a quest to make 5 of another item and give those to him too. I utilize the super elite tactic of using the warp totem in my farmhouse here to get back to the starting area as fast as possible. Disaster has struck as I am unable to plant my fruit tree saplings in the greenhouse. I will be completely honest and say I very much panicked at this point. However, as I'm watching this footage and writing the script, I know exactly why I couldn't plant them. It's because they have to be planted on the dirt and not on the wooden flooring. Basically, this is a very easy fix, and I will plant them all on the very first day of fall. I spend the rest of the day fishing to catch the last couple of rainbow trout and sunfish I need. And that is the end of summer. I feel like this is going to be slightly shorter than spring, but I also feel like we accomplished a lot more here. Maybe that's just placebo effect because I put more focus on the community center during this season, but regardless, I feel like we're doing very well for ourselves. I know for a fact I have repeated myself many times and I have rambled quite often, but that's just how my videos are, I've accepted it now. If you enjoy rambles and listening to someone talk really in detail about the smallest things, Feel free to stick around and watch more of my videos, because that is my specialty. Anyway, this has gone on long enough, and I'm sure fall and winter will be a similar length, so I won't take up any more of your time. I had tremendous fun this season. Let's see if we can keep the ball rolling in fall.